hello everyone. Welcome to the first session of on the destruction of life in the epoch of fourth industrial revolution, information, anti-production, and the ecological crisis by Anna Longley. On the destruction of life in the epoch of the fourth industrial revolution is the subtitle of Gunther Anders' second volume of the outdatedness of human beings. The seminar proposes a reflection on the increased destructive power of the digital revolution, despite its apparently augmented productive efficacy. Neglected by the official history of philosophy, Gunther Anders has been recently igniting interest. His stern considerations of the global existential threat brought about by introduction of nuclear weapons are suitable for thinking of the human condition, condition on the, at the time of the climate change. The moral paradox Anders uncovered is still preventing us from questioning the Western narrative of techno-scientific progress. While promising to globally ameliorate the quality of life thanks to the diffusion of more efficient means of production, what is also improved is the power of global annihilation. Compelled to adapt to advanced technological tools and productive practices to satisfy increasing artificial needs, we are forced to collaborate in the optimization of the means that not only increase the risk of annihilation, but also provoke damages and inequalities on a daily basis. The difficulty is that we are almost blind to this blackmailing, while at the same time we are prevented from assuming the responsibility for the destructive consequences of the irreproachable practices that allows us to express our values as consumers, as creative means to renovate and intensify consumption. To deepen the insight on Anders' thoughts on the harmful implications of contemporary capitalism, the seminar considers the lesson what his concept of anti production. Moreover, to clarify the link to ecological issues, we will read papers by bioeconomist Nicolas Georgescu Rogan about his notion of entropy. Anna Longo, obtaining her PhD in aesthetic philosophy at the University of Paris 1, she is a member of the Collège International de Philosophie in Paris. She has taught at the University Panthéon Sorbonne and Cal Arts Los Angeles, and is an instructor at the New Center for Research and Practice. Her research crosses several fields, such as metaphysics, epistemology, and aesthetics. She has been the author and editor of several books, such as Le Paradoxe de la Finitude, Le Genesis de Tricital, Breaking the Spell, a Speculative Realism under Discussion, Time Without Becoming, and Divinire de la Conoscenza, Estetica de Contigen e Contigenza del Reale. So, Anna. Thank you very much for this introduction. So, what's your name? I'm sorry. <laughs> Auver. Over. Auver. Auver. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you also for moderating this, uh, this seminar. So welcome, everybody. Um, so before, before starting, um, I would like you to introduce yourself just to, to come to know each other, just a few words about what what are your interests, what is your research, etc. Uh, just because I know that here in the New Center there are many different people with different interests, different uh, expertise and competencies and skills. So it's it's nice to know um, where you come from, what are your your interests. Um, okay, Anna, Anna yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, to you, but um, according to the new policy of the new center, the introductions should be made uh, on the second or another session, but not the first one, because the first one is public uh, and free on the okay. YouTube and to people who are going to uh, but to participate in some activities of the new center won't be, uh, you know, won't be interested in seeing people introducing each other. I thought that there was a kind of editing before making public there's no editing mm -hmm. no okay <laughs> because, at, because the, I... at the end of this session uh the introductions can be made 
Sure. Okay, so can can we have us some some time at the end for this? After after the end of the questions and answers and so on. Uh, yes. Okay, and also also because I have some announce about about the um, technical things like for example the presentations, the essay, and all these things, which is not very interesting for the general yes, public. Sure. So I I will do all, all this at the end. Okay. Okay. Yes, please don't. Sorry for interruption. Okay, <laughs> so let's start. Um, let's start. Um, so, um, I selected few readings. Um, I will start from Gunther Anders. Um, I selected some excerpt from uh, the out outdatedness of human being or the obsolescence of human beings. It depends on the translation, but actually there is no official translation in English since most of his books are not translated into English. Um, so, and then I also added a, um, an additional reading for uh, next, next time, which is in two weeks, I think. Um, from uh, Norbert Weiner. Uh, it's a chapter from a book uh, which is entitled The uh, Human Use of Human Beings, uh, which I think is really pertinent for, for, for today. Um, okay, so um, today I selected for today I selected two readings. Uh, from the second volume of the obsolescence of, of men um, or the outdatedness of, of men. Um, so the second volume, uh, the subtitle is On the Destruction of Life in the Epoch of the Third Industrial Revolution. Um, there are two volumes of this obsolescence of men. Uh, there is no English translation for the first volume, uh, just um, an unofficial translation of the second chapter of the first volume. Uh, the subtitle of the um, of the, of the of the first um, volume uh, was um, about. Uh, the transformation of the soul um, at the epoch of the second industrial revolution. Um, so um, the second industrial revolution is um, is the revolution which uh, took place in um, in in modernity. So it's more about the establishment of uh, all our uh, industrial uh, industrial system. Um, the third industrial revolution to which he refers to uh, is more about um, communication technology, information technology and, and communication. So, um, it's much more pertinent maybe uh, for for today. Anyway, there is no translation for the first volume, which is which is really uh, really important. So um, I'm going to start from uh, introducing a little bit um, Gunther Anders and is reflection in the first volume, which unfortunately is not available, uh, available for you, but it will help you to understand better what we are going to read, um, what we are going to read today. Uh, okay, so Gunther Anders uh, is a German, uh, Jewish German philosopher. Um, is not really well known uh, because it was special kind of, of philosopher. Um, so it was much more an activist maybe than, than a philosopher or anyway, refuses refuse to be considered as a philosopher in a traditional way, although uh, I think he was. 
Um, anyway, uh, to situate him historically, um, he was in uh, Germany. He made his PhD with um, Husser, uh, so a phenomenology, and he studied also with Heidegger in Germany uh, before started before Nazism and before the war. Uh, then he couldn't. He, he could not have a career in in Germany because because it was a period of a Nazi regime and he was Jewish. Um, so he basically had to um, emigrate uh, first in France and then in the United States. So he wrote the obsolescence of man in the United States by reflecting on what happened. Uh, in Germany and during the uh, Second um, World War. Uh, so it was the cousin of Walter Benjamin, um, just, so just to situate him historically. Um, so he was close to the people in the Frankfurt School, but he was not really a member of the Frankfurt School. Uh, he had kind of, oh, he, he knew them, he knew all of them. Um, yeah, discussions with them, interacted, but he was not a member of the Frankfurt School. He, he was kind of uh, different, or I mean, he's an original thinker, so he cannot be um, put in a in a school or or in in some in some specific movement. And he's also famous to be the husband of Anna Arendt, the first husband of Anna Arendt. So they met because they both um, were uh, Heidegger students, and then they divorced uh, before going to to the to the United States. So it's the first time that we have um, a man, a philosopher, who is known to be the husband of a a, philo a woman philosopher. <laughs> so it's a kind of of nice um, nice reversal of a usual of a usual situation. Um, so um, there is an influence by Anna Arendt. I think it's a kind of reciprocal reciprocal influence. They are, they are close uh, in, 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 many, in many reflections. Anyway, they, 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 I, and each of them develop his own thinking in, a personal in a personal direction but they were both concerned uh, with what happened uh in germany uh in particular with the uh, genocide so they were kind of uh reflecting of what what happened to human beings to be able to do that um what is what is the change in, in the conception of a human being in the human human nature? Uh, so, so uh, of what kind of change this act? Uh, the World Second World War was was a symptom. No, um, so it's really uh, starting uh, is is reflections by thinking of. What happened? No, uh, so um, if there was this war, um, so interrogating the event, the, the phenomenon, to, to see um, what kind of change in the human soul was implied. No, in in this, uh, in particular, uh, it was really concerned with the atomic bomb. So during the, his whole life. Uh, he was an activist uh, against um, nuclear uh, nuclear energy in general, and in particular to the military use of nuclear energy. Um, so it was the time of the Cold War in the in the United States, where he was when he, he wrote the the book. Um, so we know that it it was that particular uh, historical time uh, at which everybody were kind of developing uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, there was a kind of escalation of of this improvement, technological improvement, techno scientific improvement uh, to develop nuclear weapons. 
um, and um, he, he was actually thinking about this use of technology for mass dis destruction. So it was it, it was really wondering about uh, what what happened to us if we are developing technology um, with the end of mass destruction. Um, and um, so this is kind of the, the beginning, you know, the, con the first concern uh, for for his his reflections. Um, so I am interested in in Gunter Andes because I mean he is uh, historically situated. Um, but the second volume was written in the seventies, so it's another. It's it's more more contemporary, so he developed this. Um, is way I'm thinking, but I'm I'm interested in Gunter Andes because we can in some way uh, use his reflection to apply them uh, for our challenges, so the challenges of, of the present. You no, know? uh, in particular, if we connect it with the ecological crisis, you no, know? to say okay, we are developing a technology, and um, the 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 effect. The effects of this development is the possibility of mass destruction, uh, the possibility of extinction of, of, of humanity, you know. Um, the problem for Gunther Anders and also the problem of today is that we are kind of blind to this. Um, meaning that um, we cannot um, even imagine um the possibility of this of this annihilation of, of, of the human species um so um Gunther Andes was was really uh, concerned with this incapacity of 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 humans uh to be afraid of the consequences of the technologies that they developed uh, so it it was I mean uh, of course um, at at the at the time at the beginning it was um, a concern for the atomic bomb, meaning that okay we we develop um, a technology um, which can produce which can cause bring about uh, the annihilation of of humans the annihilation of the world and. We, we are not worried at all. Um, we just keep going uh, as, as usual. Um, and basically um, it was a, a period, the, the period after the Second World War, it was a period of great optimism, no? Uh, it was one of the most, pro most productive periods in, uh, uh, in history, you know, it was the, this kind of change in um, in capitalism. It was the beginning of um, the, the era of of mass consumption, um, of of productivity, etc. And also, um, the idea for uh, Anders was that okay, we are just working in order to develop technologies in order to consume products. But doing this, we are also collaborating in some way uh, to develop uh, weapons of mass destruction. So we are contributing um, to the production, to the development of a technology that could destroy uh, humanity but we do not feel responsible for this. So it compares the situation to the situation of the, of the Germans um, at the time of the, of the genocide, uh, when they actually were collaborating um, to the genocide, but they didn't feel responsible for it because what they were doing in their ordinary life was just normal things. But by doing these normal things, we were just collaborating or contributing 
to uh to, to the genocide um so anybody who was like acting under the german uh, regime was in some way collaborating without uh feeling this responsibility um and um so this is why for example there is a connection with uh Anna Arendt's uh reflections no for Anna Arendt there is this idea of a uh banality of evil no so so she she was wondering about this incapacity uh of of feeling of of really having an idea or realizing uh what was going on in in, in Germany so anybody was just behaving in their ordinary life like they had to do like good people like caring for their family or whatever. Um, but they were collaborating to something they couldn't understand, they couldn't grasp in the same way as um, we can't not, we, we couldn't grasp uh, the possible consequences of the, of the atomic bomb. So we're just behaving normally, uh, contributing to developing technology, but this technology has the possibility of an annihilating humanity, but we don't feel responsible. We don't feel that our uh, everyday practices are ways of collaborating or contributing or contributing to it in the same way as uh, today um, facing um, climate change. Uh, we don't feel responsible for it while we are achieving our goals so of our everyday goals or our everyday activity, you know? So we are just behaving ethically in an um, ethically correct way. Uh, we're just doing what we are supposed to do. Um, but basically, um, what we are contributing to is the possibility of the destruction of, of, of humanity. Um, so uh, Anders in, in this first volume was wondering about this incapacity, uh, no? Um, and so he forged um, a concept, a notion that he, he called um, Promethean shame um, or Promethean gap. Uh, and uh, this uh, this notion is is important because um, because it's it's the idea that um, we uh, are smaller than um, the technology that we developed. So in some ways, said um, we developed uh, technologies which are so powerful. Uh, which are extremely powerful, which are powerful as God, who can cause the apocalypse. Um, but uh, we do not have a possibility, the capacity of actually um, understanding them. So we have this capacity of destruction, uh, but we do, do not have the feelings which are adequate to this power. So we cannot fear them. We do, do not really fear them. We, we cannot. Uh, we cannot grasp the consequences of, of this. Um, so basically, um, there is um, um, our, our capacity of judgment is not um, um, developed enough. Uh, no, it's inadequate. Our capacity of judgment is inadequate with respect to the capacity uh, of our technology. So we are uh, in, in some way uh, unable um, to, to, to judge, to understand, to, to grasp the ends of the process, the finality of the process that uh, we, brought, uh, we brought about. Um, so the idea is basically is basically Kantian, uh, no, in some way. Um, so um, the the idea is that um, what is in, what is the condition for freedom? 
uh, no, in, in, in the Kantian system, but also in, um, in the re-elaboration of, of a notion from, by um, Anna Arendt. Um, freedom is based in the possibility of um, judging the finality of action. Uh, so what basically the idea is what we do is to bring about a, a word, which is a common word. Uh, usually um, we have the possibility of acting for uh, bringing about to create an artificial world. Um, and uh, our action as a finality, which is this collective world. Uh, with technology, the possibility is that uh, the, the, the problem is that we do not grasp the finality of what we are doing. So we cannot judge the kind of world we are contributing to bring about. Um, why? Um, uh, because there is no there is no more uh, there is no more a finality. Um, <coughs> uh, meaning that um, meaning that there is a process and the process is, is a process where uh, there is no finality but only means. Um, that means that uh, the, the, the development of technology is no more a process to produce something which is useful, so to create a specific project of a world, a specific project that we can judge and say, okay, so the, the world we are bringing about is good or bad, uh, is a word that I want or that I don't want. Uh, so one, one can say, okay, I do not want to collaborate to, the, um, to this project because it's not rational, it's not in agreement with reason, it's not in agreement with morality. Uh, <coughs> um, with this process that we, um, we started with, with, with uh, modern technology. This is no more. Uh, this is no more possible because technology is a tool, is a mean. Uh, but this tool uh, is not meant to bring about a specific kind of world, but is meant to produce other means. So we develop technology in order to produce objects, to produce things, and these things are useful for something else. Um, but there is an infinite chain of means to produce other means. Um, and the development of technology is the development of a mean to produce other means. But there is no end. The only end is the reproduction of the production system. So the infinite chain. So we basically cannot judge what we are contributing to because there is no finality. So um, there is no possibility of developing a moral judgment, so a moral feeling, because we don't see <coughs> um, what our actions are contributing to. So we, we just um, judge our action with respect to personal interest, uh, meaning that um, we judge our action with respect to the uh, possibility of surviving. Um, so we judge our action as good or, or, or bad uh, with respect to um, the means that they provide us um, to, uh, to have, uh, to have a, a desirable life. So we just need a work, a job, uh, in order to get the money uh, to satisfy our needs, and this is and this is good, but we just judge our action with respect to this, but we cannot judge our action with respect to the kind of world they are contributing to actualize. Uh, so according to uh, according to Gunther Anders, there is there is this kind of of, of paradox. Um, which prevents uh, our our freedom. So the paradox is that um, we are compelled, you no, know, to to collaborate, uh, to develop means, the, 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 
ultimate consequence of which is the destruction of the human species. Um, because we have to satisfy our, our needs. So if we do not collaborate, we do not satisfy our needs. So we die today, but uh, in order to um, in order to to assure to guarantee the condition for our everyday life, we have to collaborate to uh, the, the development of the means, the uh, ultimate consequence of the, of which is the possibility of annihilation of a species. So there is this kind of paradox, which was the paradox which was evident you know, during the, the Cold War uh, with uh, nuclear weapons, um, and uh, which is really evident you now um, today. So we, we, in some way, uh, we need um, we need to to collaborate. We need to 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 work. We need to to develop technology to develop means of production um because we don't have our uh, other choice so if we want to have a satisfactory life a desirable life we have to do this uh, and so we judge our action with respect to the possibility of sustaining ourselves and they are good also because they are contributing to developing new technology which is the possibility of assuring um welfare to everybody um, but we cannot judge our action with respect to the ultimate consequences of them, which is the uh, possibility of uh, mass destruction. Um, if we had this possibility, we would see that what we do every day, which is considered as legitimate and as correct, is morally incorrect. So in Kantian terms, there is no agreement between the world we are bringing about and the moral imperative um, of uh, producing a world uh, where freedom is possible. Uh, we are producing a world where freedom is not possible because there, there will be no one. Uh, it will be the end of history. Uh, so we are bringing about a world uh, which is not compatible, which is not conform to the moral imperative of creating a world, um, which is a world <coughs> where freedom is possible, because we are bringing about a world where there is no freedom, because there is nothing, because it's just annihilation and, and, and destruction. Um, so, but we cannot see, we cannot feel the immorality of our action, and we consider our action as uh, ethically correct, and they are considered as such. Uh, because our, our standpoint uh, is, is limited, and our standpoint is, is the standpoint of assuring the condition for the individual survival. But the problem is that there is this contradiction between uh, the individual survival and the survival of a species. Um, so we are in some way prevented from uh, our real uh, political freedom, uh, which is the freedom of deciding or choosing the kind of world we, were, we want to bring about. Uh, because uh, we are merely interested in uh, producing ourselves. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of self-expression, no? Uh, it's a matter of self-realization. It's a matter of self-affirmation. But this self-affirmation uh, is in contradiction with the possibility of the affirmation of a species, of, uh, in contradiction with the possibility of affirmation of life, uh, of freedom in, in, uh, in general. Um, so this is this is the kind the kind of of, of problem, no? According to um, according to Gunther Anders. <laughs> um, so um, the um, the Promethean gap is um, is also. Um, of a Promethean shame um, is also the, the, the feeling which motivates uh, this, 
because basically um, we feel uh, um, that we are in a sort of competition with the technological tools that we created. So machines are more efficient than us. Uh, and it's more evident with artificial intelligence today. Um, so um, machines are more efficient than us. Uh, so we are in a sort of competition with machines. So in order to sustain ourselves, uh, we have to behave like machines. We have to show that we are more productive, more creative with, we are better than machines. Otherwise, we lose our job and we lose the possibility of sustaining ourselves. Uh, so this is another reason for our, our blindness, no? Um, so the feelings that, that we have are not moral feelings, meaning that we are not judging the kind of world that we are contributing to bring about with respect to the um to to the moral uh feeling of so the necessity of freedom um but uh but we are just feeling this pressure uh to uh, show that we worth more than machines so we have to run after uh our machines to to, to behave like uh like 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 machines um because we feel this, this this shame and the other feeling that we feel is the feel of needs we are always craving for something so we are always lacking something and for for anders um one of the things that contributes you no know, to to our unfreedom uh is this creation of artificial needs so the idea that even though we are producing a lot we are producing um, a lot of tools for producing a lot of new products and the new products will produce the means to produce other products. We are always in need um, because if we do not consume, we do not affirm ourselves. So the worth of the individual is in consumption. So we worth what we consume and we are evaluated with respect to our access to consumption. So in order to affirm ourselves, uh, to be competitive, we need to use the tools, to use the, uh, to use the technologies which are available. Otherwise we are not competitive. We cannot work, uh, we cannot produce, we cannot sustain ourselves. Um, but according to Anders, these needs are artificially produced. So he says, okay, it, it's the product, uh, it's the merchandise which produces the need. It's not that what is produced is produced in conformity with needs which are natural or which are already there. Um, so we are kind of desiring uh, in some way uh, this consumption because we are desiring to affirm, you no, know, um, uh, to, to affirm ourselves. But in, in this way, we are kind of desiring our own sli slavery, so our own impossibility of of freedom, which is the possibility of deciding, of choosing, of of um, determining uh, the kind of world that we want to bring about. Uh, so this was the problem in the first volume of um, the outdatedness of a human being. So hum human beings are outdated uh, because they are inferior with respect to the tools, to the technology they, they created, uh, because the technology is more efficient than, than human beings, and human beings feel ashamed because they have to run after, and, and also because the development of this technology is the last kind of uh, technology. Uh, thinking of the atomic bomb, you know, for example, um, it's the possibility of destroying destroying the species so to to end history. Um, so um, so what is what is really uh, human for um, for Anders, which is the historicity of, of human beings, is, is no more no more possible. No. Um, so one thing which is important is that um, 
Well, uh, Gunther Anders is one of the first thinker of, of technology, is one of the first philosophers of, of technology, but is not uh, technophobic. Um, uh, his position is really particular. So he was um, really close to the school, German school of um, philosophical anthropology. Um, so he thought basically that um, there is no a human essence. Uh, there is no a human nature. Uh, so it's not saying, okay, this is a way of denaturating the human because human nature is different. Uh, it, it's not his idea. His idea is not, we have to give up with technologies because uh, it's a kind of perversion. He says, no, the essence of human being is that there is no essence uh, in a human being. So he says, human being is historical. Uh, this historicity of human beings means that um, the human beings create a second nature, so they create artificial artificial worlds. So the, the expression of freedom in human beings is the possibility of creating uh, a world which is not natural, which is a human world. Uh, no, um, and and technology has an important part in this. Uh, because it's through technology, through the technologies, the techniques that we develop, that we can create other kinds of organization, of social organization. Um, we can produce, no, this this artificial, uh, this artificial world. Um, but there is also the idea that there is a, a real historicity. So. Um, what we what we produce in order to be um, adequate to the possibility of of freedom uh, must be um, uh, the construction of a world which is open to a revision to be um, replanned. Uh, so the possibility of a process of an historical process which uh, which can go on. So it's a, it's a kind of trans continual transformation of what is the concept of a human being, meaning that in any kind of society with any different kinds of techniques which have been developed during history, uh, the concept of human beings of what we believe, how do we behave, uh, what we feel, etc., have been transformed. No, so, so the idea is that the transformation, the historical transformation, uh, expresses this this kind of freedom, the possibility of man of transforming itself through through, through technologies. Uh, the problem is that we arrive at at a point uh, in which the technologies that we produced are technologies which are putting at risk the existence of human beings. So are technologies uh, which are um, actually uh, threatening the historicity of human beings, so the possible evolution of, of, of human beings, uh, because the, 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 the problem is that the, the end uh, of, of civilization uh, is really possible, is there. We have the means to destroy uh, humanity, so to put an end uh, to history. So we, we develop technologies that rather than uh, opening uh, history to transformation uh, are a kind of preventing the expression of of this uh, of this process. Uh, so this is basically the the, the problem you now for um, for Gunther Anders. Um, so it was uh, really pertinent at the time at which he was writing, but I think that. This kind of reflection are kind of pertinent also no, today. Uh, if we think um, of the different challenges uh, we are facing, um, but also if we think about um, the new technologies that we developed, like artificial intelligence, uh, where artificial intelligence has this vocation to be the last, no? uh, the last technology. Uh, or to um, or to drive no the history of humanity without humans being able no uh, in some way to to determine uh, the, the development. Though we cannot even imagine what kind of society will be 
uh, bring about uh, by artificial intelligence. No, we just have to run after it um, and just uh, be careful not to be substituted by, you know, um, just to be uh, useful uh, to, to, to that. Anyway, um, you have any kind of question with respect to this or, or we can just go through the readings? Okay, so I share my screen and we just try to um, to read, uh, to go through the, um, the text of today, just the most important points. Then, um, then I will stop uh, uh, to let you uh, com comment or ask questions or whatever. And also, I will leave some some time for for you to introduce yourself, and I will explain you also about the uh, oral presentations, the final say, and all this stuff. Okay, so I share my screen. So you have the, the, the readings in the shared folder in the in the Google Docs. Uh, so the first reading is the introduction uh, to the second volume of the obsolescence of man on the destruction of life in the epoch of the third industrial revolution. So the third industrial revolution, as I said, is uh, the revolution uh, which was just beginning uh, when he wrote this book, which is in 1979. It's uh, the uh, revolution uh, with uh, computational technology, information technologies. Um, um, also, I think that he, he really influenced uh, also um, Gilles Deleuze. Um, so we will see this because we have some readings also uh, from um, Antiedipus and, and Mid Plateau. Um, anyway, I have to, to move the window because I, don't, I can see my text. Um, So it's, it's an introduction. So you have all the themes, um, the subjects of this of this of this volume. So it's a, it's a sort of um, summary um, of uh, of a book. Um, so the the first thing is that um, so is is just making um, a, a comparison with respect to the uh, to to this the, the second industrial revolution, which was in the in the, in the first volume of the book, to see um, to update this with respect to the changes. Um, so um, in the in the in the second uh, industrial revolution, there was um, there was um machines uh, to produce uh, goods uh, consumption goods or useful goods or, or, or whatever um and today we have machine uh, which produces other machines um so machines are produced by machines um and uh, uh, and and this is important because because we we are in a system where the the goal is no more just to produce some specific kind of good which is useful in some way or might be useful uh, with respect to our previous need. Uh, but we are producing uh, machines by way uh, of machines, so we are producing machines in order to develop uh, our machines. So we are, uh, machines are means, but the, the end of these means 
is the production of other means. And it's really evident you know, with um, today technology, uh, you know, uh, for example, the development you know, of, of artificial, uh, artificial intelligence. So, so the goal uh, is not really to produce something, uh, but the goal is to develop the machine itself. Um, so this is this is kind of a, you know, also the, the process of learning, you no, know, of these of these machines is a, is a machine which is kind of improving itself, and and the end is to improve itself. Uh, but basically, uh, the use of this or, or or the product of this is is less is less important. Or the, the, the end uh, of this is just to provide us with means um, to uh, with, with useful means, uh, which are not meant to do something specific, but they are just means to work, you no, know, to so to improve ourselves as means. Uh, but there is no production which is. Uh, which is um, envisioned. So this is this is a change. You no, know, we we are in an epoch of uh, machines to produce machines. The problem is that in, in this in this system, um, the um, this Promethean gap is expressing um, itself in a new way. So it's not just that we are not um, efficient enough uh, with respect to our machines. So this, of course. But it's also that um, we can um, we we are not uh, we our needs are too small with respect uh, to what uh, the, the machines can provide uh, us with. Um, so he says, okay. Um, in order to to fuel production, we have to consume. Uh, because if we do not consume, there is no uh, no no more production. No, so he says, okay, we 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 are compelled, uh, no, to uh, to consume, but basically um, we have limited needs. So the idea is to create these artificial needs um, uh, in order to uh, intensify uh, consumption. Um, so uh, he says um, the the problem uh, is is that it's not just that we are producing means to produce our means, but ourselves, uh, our products as consumers, we are products because we are uh, um, uh, produced uh, as set of needs in order to consume. So we are produced as consumers. Um, so in some way, uh, our role um, is the role of, of, of consumers, but as consumers, naturally, uh, we are not enough. We cannot consume all what is produced. Um, so this is a, a, a new, a new um, Promethean shame. So we, we uh, do not have um, enough hunger, no, uh, to um, uh, to consume uh, to consume everything. Uh, so we are produced artificially according to uh, to, to needs, uh, and these needs are no more needs just for uh, goods, um, but they are um, um, needs for tools. So basically. Um, we have we do not just have to uh, have goods like uh, material goods so material things but what we need are need are means to improve our behaviors uh, and improving our behaviors means to access uh, consumption so there is also an artificial construction of the human beings which is entering this, this new uh, phase. So uh, give us this day, our daily hunger um, is a way of saying, okay, uh, the, 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 in order to, to for, for this process to, to keep going, 
uh, we need to desire uh, no, this consumption. Um, and of course, consumption means also uh, destruction, no? Um, because we need to, to, um, to have always new products and to consume products and also to consume human beings. Uh, as um, as products, meaning that our needs are not enough. So um, we need to be updated with new needs, with, also with new skills, no? Uh, so according to the development of technology, we need to develop new skills. Uh, we have to produce ourselves in order to use the new tools. Otherwise, we are not competitive enough. Um, so in order to be capable of consuming products, we need to have a need for them. Uh, however, since this need does not naturally arise in us, uh, we have to produce it. And this must be done by way of a particular industry, uh, by way of particular means of production produced by machines for the purpose, um, and which are products of third uh, degree. Uh, so this industry is the industry you know, of uh, advertising. Um, and today, of course, with social media, it is much more evident than um, at the time of, um, of Gunther Anders. Um, so... Um, there is this production of human needs, but also uh, that of a technology um, of production. So in some way, uh, it's um, human needs are produced um, and they are needs for uh, new means of production, um, which offer new uh, means no new skills, new new behaviors. Um, so according to, to Gunther Anders, the moral imperatives uh, arise from technology. And uh, um, this, this moral imperative is uh, a moral imperative to, to, to consume. Um, And also um, to consume and to produce. So everything can be produced. All the means that can be produced must be produced uh, and, and must be used. Um, so if we produce a new technology, we also have to create the need for it. And we have to impose uh, the use of it, even though there is no human need that corresponds to it. So for example, weapons of mass destruction are produced products uh, which has no need. So no, nobody need mass destruction weapons um, because, and they are not desirable because they can destroy humanity, but they must be produced and we are producing them and we are using them. Um, using them, according to Anders, also means to use them um, as a way for uh, dissuasion, no? Uh, because actually we have them. Uh, so, so he says, okay, we produce things, uh, we have to produce things, even though there is no natural need for them, uh, but we produce artificial need. For example, okay, we create... Uh, must destruct weapons uh, in order uh, to guarantee peace and to and to protect, uh, no, and to protect humanity. No, uh, it was the, the very you know narrative in during the second uh, um, during the Cold War. Not to say okay, so we have to develop uh, weapons of mass destruction in order uh, to have peace. Um, so to make them desirable, no. Um, so everything uh, that has been made must really be used for the purpose for which it, it was uh, designed. 
uh, well, this is, I mean, really more about normal technologies. So we, we develop technologies and we have to use them. Um, so not only is it a rule that what can be done must be done, uh, but also that uh, what must be done is inevitable. So you must not refrain from using that which can be used. Um, and, and we see this really clearly, I think, today with, with new technologies. No? So technologies which are developed at the beginning, we don't know what to do with them. And, and after a, a little while, um, we, we all have to use them. So for example, ChatGTP uh, last year, one year ago, when it first you know, appeared, we didn't know what to do with that. We really was kind of playing with it, just asking stupid questions. So we actually, we didn't know what to do. It was a kind of curiosity. And, uh, and today, a year after, um, there are enterprises who are just firing employees in order to use uh, you know, uh, this new system of artificial intelligence. Um, and we, it, it seems that we have to invest in it, we have to use it, um, and we are starting to think about how we, our world must be transformed by the use of this. Uh, so even though there was no use or no need for that, the, the need is created and, the, and it, it is used. It, it, it's there, we have to use it. Without the possibility of understanding what is the finality of it. Um, without the possibility of judging, uh, no, uh, is the world which is bring about by this development a desirable one or not. Uh, the problem is that if we do not use it, we are not competitive. And if we are not competitive, uh, we cannot sustain ourselves. We don't have the means to, to survive, you know, to have a desirable life. <clears throat> so in some way, it's the product which produces the need and not the, and not the other way around. Uh, so there is a Promethean disjunction, a new Promethean disjunction, uh, which is the disjunction between what we produce and what we can use. So we seek uh, the uh, raison d'etre uh, for these products, which is the, uh, the, the, the use, uh, the finality, you know, the, the use of this of these products. Um, so desperately we go in search of a question that might be able to provide a posteriori legitimacy uh, to the answer that we already have. Uh, and we tirelessly see produce new products in order to fulfill this new task. Uh, no? So all the applications, no? for example, of the technologies that we have or how to, how to use them, uh, transformations in societies, etc. Um, so this Promethean disjunction is is our, is between the maximum that we can produce and the maximum uh, we can uh, we can need. So uh, our actual finitude no longer consists in the fact that we are animalia indigentia, so needy beings. Uh, but quite the contrary, it consists in the fact uh, that we can need too little, in short, in our lack of poverty. So poverty must be produced, uh, actively uh, produced. And so we see this uh, really clearly, you know, uh, in fact, uh, despite the fact that we are uh, very, very productive, uh, inequalities are, are rising, are increasing you know, in, in the world. So it's not that we are eradicating poverty through uh, growth, uh, through uh, production, through the improvement of means of production, but we are actually increasing poverty. And we are increasing poverty because lack is artificially uh, produced, because the standards are, are rising. Um, and if we, we think about the um, 
climate change. Um, we also have the negative effects of this uh, process of uh, productive development of consumption, which is the production of uh, rests of things that cannot be uh, used anymore, so you know, polluting things. Um, they are uh, preventing um, people from um, from, from uh, producing according to, to the, the, the traditional way or ways of producing. So, for example, soils are no more uh, fertile, and in many places in 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 the world, um, life is is really is really at risk. You no. Know? Um, so it's it, it's this creation of of poverty, and in order to uh, to solve this problem, the idea of so okay, we develop technology further, um, meaning that we have we will have new tools, new means, and we will have to impose these means. But the fact that we have a new a new means, a new a new a new tool, uh, entail the fact entails the fact that um, who do not have this tool. Uh, who, who who don't have this means uh, have to buy it in some way, have to acquire it in order to be uh, competitive. Uh, so this is the creation of, of, of a need. And this is really close to the concept of anti-production. No? In, um, in Gilles Deleuze, for example, that we will see uh, in the last section of, um, of the seminar. Okay, so this is the, this kind of third you no know, um, revolution, and it's this stage in which we have to produce needs. Um, so the industry is no more producing products; it's producing needs, uh, and producing needs means to legitimate the production of means. Um, but these means are means to produce new needs. Uh, if you see, for example, um, social media or, or all this, this kind of, of, of new technologies, um, they, they are not producing uh, something. Uh, they are just producing needs uh, in, in people. No, uh, It's a way of distributing uh, lifestyles um, in producing the desire for um using of course the technological means uh but also um consuming so it's a kind of automated industry you know, for producing um producing needs with all the the, the problem you now that we have that we all there are increasing problem where people uh do not feel good enough with respect to the others no they are all comparing ourselves with the other our life with other people's lives and we are all deducing okay oh, i'm not good enough uh my body is not good enough my behavior my lifestyle is not good enough my way my style is not good enough uh and we have to uh, to consume so it's a kind of industry you no know, for needs production and also no uh, destruction because it's consumption. So the spectacular means of production to which I refer is naturally that um, uh, one that for the first time ever put humanity in the position of producing its own destruction. Uh, that is the atomic bomb. So it says, okay, we, we don't just don't have to, to think that everything is for the good. Uh, but basically, if we add the possibility of considering uh, where we are going we, with all this is the possibility of uh, destroying, uh, destroying humanity. So we are in an epoch in which we incessantly manage the production of our own destruction. And this is a, a suitable criteria uh, criterion for defining the new stage of industrial uh, revolution. Um,
And this has its a kind of metaphysical changement uh, and non-epochal changement. Uh, it, it's what we said before, no? So because the epoch of changing epochs no longer exists after 1945, meaning that there is no uh, history, there is no future. But there is no future does not mean that we uh, could not keep on with the same kind of system of uh, production, so of transformation uh, forever, like um, not yet, um, um, not yet uh, destroyed or not yet annihilated. Um, that means that uh, it's kind of, we, we cannot even imagine the possibility of initiating another kind of process, which is no no more, uh, no this process, we cannot think about another kind of world uh, where there is another process, where the future is not just the future, which is bring about by technological development. So it's like we delegated the future to the to technology without assuming the responsibility of orienting um, orienting this or judging what we are really constructing, what we are really building, because basically what we are producing is the possibility of um, the destruction of humanity. So in any event, our epoch is, regardless of uh, whether it ends now or, or continues, the last. Uh, since the danger to which we have exposed ourselves by way of spectacular product, uh, which has become definitive um, mark of Cain of our existence, can never disappear, not even uh, with the end uh, itself. And in, in, in fact, no, we, we think that our technologies will survive us. Uh, so even though humanity will not hear anymore, probably artificial intelligence will be. Another thing is this transformation of the human beings in creator and uh, materia. Um, homo creator means that um, we are able to, to create products which are not natural, uh, so new new things to, to enlarge the ontology in some way. Um, more interesting is this idea that we, we transform ourselves into raw material, um, and this is a difference with respect to the second industrial revolution. So in the second industrial revolution, uh, human beings were like means of production. Um, so like machines, uh, like tools. Um, today, they are raw materials, they are resources. No more just tools, but resources. Uh, so they are completely, uh, they can be uh, completely transformed. Um, and, uh, uh, and the idea is that we are produced as consumers. Um, so in order to be, con to be produced as consumers, uh, we have to be considered as raw materials. So not just means of production, uh, but we have to be produced, our desire are produced, our emotions are produced, our needs are produced, our behavior are produced, our opinions are produced. Um, and so what we are is nothing, but we are just um, uh, resources. Uh, for example, we are resources of information, no? So, so we are patterns of information that can be exploited to produce new information. And uh, the use that we have is the use um, uh, of um, the information that we have. So we, we, we try you know, with social media, for example, uh, you know, to, to produce ourselves as uh, desirable uh, information to be consumed uh, by the other. And, and other value is the value of the information that we can provide to the other, you know, that, that we other can share, the other can use, the other can uh, reproduce. Uh, so we produce ourselves as man, as goods, as, as consumption goods or information. Uh, so we are 
raw materials. We are no more means of production, but we are producing ourselves as products to be consumed. And we are considered uh, as patterns of information. So we are just raw uh, material and the patterns of information that we are can be modified, produced, reproduced, transformed uh, by means of other uh, information. So our opinions can be forged, our desire can be forged, our needs can be forged by means of um, information. And what we express, the way in which we affirm ourselves uh, is affirming ourselves as useful, as useful patterns of information, so as useful uh, goods. And this is our value. This is the way in which we are competitive now with respect to, uh, to machine. So is is not, I mean, is is talking about cloning because he didn't see uh, new technologies arising. Anyway, the, this idea of um, uh, human beings as, as um, raw materials, I think is really interesting also for this concept, which uh, is a consequence, which is this post-civilizational cannibalism. Um, it's starting elaborating this notion of post uh, civilizational cannibalism by reflecting of reality uh, reality shows uh, in the US. Uh, reality shows really started in the 70s on television. And in the first volume is elaborated this notion of post-civilizational cannibalism, thinking of reality, a reality show. Uh, and as, as we know, you know, reality show as just the first step uh, toward our, uh, our our system of of, um, of social media where everybody is kind of making a film, constructing himself as 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 um, as a reality show character, no, as as a making himself a show, uh, his life a show, uh, in some way, uh, to be consumed by the others, uh, and technologies are the means. Um, that are available to us to construct ourselves uh, no, as consumption goods in this post-civilizational cannibalism. So we are, we are all consuming other human beings uh, in the same way as we, we did in, in, in reality shows. So the idea is that um, in this post-civilizational cannibalism, we are not just means, so we are not just tools like workers in factories, they were just tools, but um, today we are raw materials. So resources, human resources. So there is this utilization of men as raw material, which overshadows the utilization of men as a means or instrument. So it's no more a problem of uh, forcing uh, slavery, uh, but uh, it's a way of freely uh, producing uh, ourselves as consumption goods so desiring to be to be consumption goods um then we have this other idea of um um the fact that man is um, superfluous uh, because, of course, technologies are more productive than, than workers. Um, so the problem is, of course, that um, we do not need to uh, to work on, on, in any case, there, there are too, uh, too many workers. Um, so workers are non necessary. Um, and this is the, the, the fear not today with artificial intelligence is that 
that we all will be unemployed, you know, because um, machines will substitute uh, humans in all the uh, tasks. Uh, the, the, the consequence uh, is that, uh, of course, um, labor or, or work became a sort of um, of right. Uh, no, so so we are we are fighting in order to have a job. Um, so the difference is that we are no more fighting to work less. Uh, we are no more um, uh, fighting because we are exploited, um, but because there is no uh, labor enough because we cannot work because people who cannot work. Uh, they are um, they are not free from labor, um, but they are useless. No, they have no value. So it's a kind of hellish existence, the existence of unemployed uh, people. So basically, we work in order to um, demonstrate that we we have we are efficient enough to deserve a job. Um, so the, 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 the idea is that um, labor was at the finality and the finality of labor was to produce something. Uh, today, uh, the idea is that the end uh, of work is no more to produce something. Uh, so a finality that we can see, that we can think about. Um, but the end of work is to, to prove that we, ha that we are um good enough to work so the end of work is work uh the end of work is to produce ourselves as um useful workers and to prove ourselves uh to be useful workers so we are dispossessed no the possibility of judging no uh to, to go back to the to what we said before uh, the end of our activity, because the end of the activity itself is to keep on the activity. So free time and, and the classical equation of free time and freedom um, is false in every respect. So free time is a curse. And if I know, uh, I think that today all this system of um, social media and networking is kind of eliminating free time uh, in, in the sense that we are productive even in, in free time. Uh, we are not only consuming during free time, but we are also producing data no, in, 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 in free time. Uh, so in some way we can prove our, our value also without working or, or working otherwise. Today the idea is, is no okay, but we have to, to destroy uh, machines like the there is this movement, you know, the uh Ludist, uh, the Ludists were the um workers who destroyed the first um waving machine, uh, waving machines because they were afraid to be unemployed. Um but today, uh, according to Gunther Anders, there is no no, no meaning no in destroying in destroying the in destroying the machines. Um, what would make sense are kind of negative strikes, so the uh, strikes of leisure. Havismo Lucia, that is repeating many times, uh, is because Gunther Anders um, also wrote literature. So um, the Molusian Catacomb is, is a novel uh, by Gunther Anders and is a kind of imaginary uh, imaginary world which is inspired by the uh, situa situation in um, uh, Nazi Germany. So this is why it's kind of referring to this Molusian 
things it it is novel i don't think it has been translated into into english so in fact today no we are protesting against unemployment And so we we feel that our life is meaningless if we do not uh, do not work. But we will see this in the other um, in the other reading about meaning, which is for next not to next section. So the fact that loss of meaning as illness, etc. We will see this in details uh, next time. Then there is this, this idea of a um, new um, imperative, um, which is uh, that everything uh, uh, exists is something that can be uh, exploited, that can be used. So the, the principle of ontology is that everything can be used and everything can be used, must be used. Uh, so we are obliged to exploit everything that is exploitable. And we are also obligated to bring to light anything and everything that is exploitable. Uh, which is supposedly concealed in each and everything, even in men. So that's why also men know it's, it's seen uh, as a resource, as something which is exploitable, as a raw, as a raw material. So because because in, in the previous volume, he has a, this kind of ontology, which was an ontology of means. So everything is a mean for something. Uh, to justify it with respect to a to a new um a use. Uh, today is known even important um to to be uh to, to be a mean, um but it's more radical because everything is a raw material. So um so humans so machines are not just means but they are um. Uh, raw materials to produce uh, to produce things. Uh, the fact is that to be to be a, a raw material or or um, or a resource um, also um, also means that um, this. Um, um where there is no um value in, in things in, in themselves uh which is not what can be um made from them so the metaphysical assumption is that there is nothing uh, that cannot be uh, put to use Um, so it's no more uh, idealism, so uh, being is the correlate of utilization, uh, but utilization for humans. Uh, the fact is that um, the word, uh, we, we do not often uh, use object of a word in an immediate way for ourselves, but for uh, something. Um, so things are are um are correlate you no know, of utilization but not correlate uh with respect to human ends so word then is not only the totality of that which can be made into something but the totality of that which are the obligation to make something of 
and there is uh, nothing but what that one cannot use to make something else. So to sum up, being a raw material is the criterion existing. Uh, and also this is the new uh, ontological uh, criteria. No? Uh, everything is, is, is a raw uh, material means a criterion existing. Um, then, uh, of course, we, we can think of things which are not raw materials, uh, so which are the rest. So uh, the rest of consumption. Um, so uh, we are not just producing uh, things out of things, but producing things out of things, we are also destroying things, meaning that we are producing things we cannot use anymore. Um, so uh, there are these two aspects, no, which are which are really important. Uh, because because of course we we are. Uh, we are using raw materials to produce something. So everything exists is a uh, raw material. So we can may make something out of it. Um, but we are also destroying products because we have to intensify consumption. So we have to produce new product, which we substitute you know, the, the products that we are, we are using. Uh, but by doing this, we are producing also materials which cannot be used anymore. Uh, so pollution. Um, so, for example, all these um, gases, no, that we produce um, CO2, uh, it's materials uh, that are no raw materials. They do not exist. We cannot do nothing with that. They cannot be used anymore. Uh, and this is destroy you know, the, 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 the world. So they are, um, they are uh, they are no more things of the world. It's a kind of anti-world. Um, and of course, this is also the, the idea for uh, for human beings, no? Um, if we are raw material, so we can use, uh, or if we can um, prove that we are useful, we have a value, we exist. But if we cannot prove uh, that something can be done out of us, uh, we have no value. We do not exist um, anymore. So, so this this is why also no labor is is a, is a kind of right. It's a right of existence. Uh, but in 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 a strange or contradictory way, you know. Um, because in order to exist, uh, we need to prove that we can be used. Um, so it, it, it's a sort of contradiction with respect no, to, to freedom. So we have feel the right to be used um, in order to affirm ourselves freely, rather than um, be free independently of uh, of the use or be valuable independently of, of the use. Um, I skip this. So just a quick uh, look at this other uh, reading uh, about the obsolescence of freedom. Uh, so the idea uh, is that most people are molded by mass supply of products and by the pressure of mass media. Uh, so we are produced uh, into a customer, into, into consumers. Uh, so we think that uh, needs and desires are our needs and our desires, uh, but basically they are artificially uh, produced. So we are not uh, by, by consuming, uh, we, we think that we are expressing ourselves, um, meaning that the way we, um, we dress, the way we um, construct our appearance, but also the skills that we develop, we have the, the idea that we are really expressing uh, who we are. 
but who we are, what we desire to be, uh, is is constructed, no, uh, is molded uh, by uh, by by communication. Um, so we think we are free to express ourselves, but while expressing ourselves, we are just following uh, the imperative um which is coming uh from communication no? so so as as Deleuze says um information are order order words are injunction so it would it would be childish to believe that the process of production would find um, its purpose in, in what is generally understood to be its purpose, but is the production of material products uh, instead of the process of three, um, uh, three uh, phases. Uh, so in order to be utilized uh, and in order to continue to be utilized, utilized um, requires certain needs. So forms of behavior, particular lifestyles, um so um it's not just to produce things but also to produce these needs um so the, a product uh it's not just achieved as, as a product but it has to transform immediately into a means of production um so it has to produce um the um the, the need so she has to produce the consumer so we produce a new object a new things a, a new means but we also have to to produce the consumers of this um object of this commodity or this of this this means so we have also to uh to produce um uh, we have to create inter the need requ required for its use and the lifestyle uh, required for its um, continued utilization. So we have uh, at the end a production of may of men by way of products. Uh, not only because we are, um, because products uh, define ourselves, so define uh, define our desires, our needs, our goals. Um, but um, but also um, also because. Um, what we consume, what we use, uh, or the lifestyle what we that we choose define ourselves. So we we think, but we affirm ourselves, or we express ourselves um, through the um, means that we use, from what we buy, from what we use, uh, the way we construct ourselves. You no. Know? Um, so there are needs, desire, which are which are produced by by products, but also we ourselves we think that we have to we are not complete in some way. We we do not express ourselves if we don't have access to consumption. So it's through consumption that we reveal or express ourselves. What we are is what we consume. What we are is how do we behave. What we are is our opinions, no? And all these things are provided uh, to us. But we think that we are free to express ourselves. So because most products are commodities that are mass produced, they transform, uh, use them, in the same way um, they are produced and thus homogenize them and the photo them into masses. Then we don't have the perception of masses anymore, uh, of course, because there are um, many different lifestyles which are which are produced, even though um, these different lifestyles are standardized, and also because um, we are considered as 
uh, individual consumers. No, we are eremites. We are no more the, the masses in in the squares. Um, we are solitaries. No, in front of our screens. So we do not gather. Um, but this does not mean that we are our behavior uh, are not standardized. So the, the thesis, the mass commodity, commodity produces masses is valid then for the millions who uh, separated as solitary individuals have to be deprived of powers, um, but must be um, as assimilated persons uh, entirely controllable. And what is happening now with, uh, with, with algorithms? No, so we, we do not gather, we are, we are solitary, but we are considered in some way um, uh, controllable, meaning that our desire, our desires can be can be molded. Our needs can be molded. Um, the the way in which we, we express ourselves can be uh, can be induced. So that's um, what molds men are products and things. The products have taken the place of our fellow man, and and maybe uh, to, today if, if you think that maybe uh, no we produce ourselves as products or as patterns of um, desirable information, uh, we are uh, our fellow uh, fellow man uh, are. Um, other people, but other people as they are products. No, so in in maybe in in, in social media, the idea is that um, they, 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 uh, we we are relating to other people in the same way as we relate to the products. Uh, so we are molded by uh, other people in the same way as we are molded by uh, products. So products uh, or by procession also not collaborate in molding the forms of behavior. So social man only exists uh, within the world of production uh, and of products. And then the, the other aspect you now is that we are not only consumers of products, but products are opinions. Um, so um, we don't. We 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 are also uh, consumers of uh, opinion. Um, So opinions are supplied today in the same way as um, any other uh, finished uh, commodity. So we think that we express our own opinions, uh, but basically uh, we are just conforming to the opinions which are provided, you no, know, um, provided to us. So we are supplied uh, with expressions, uh, which are supposed to be expression of our side in the same way as consumption is supposed to be um, an affirmation of, of ourself. Uh, in the same way, the, the expression of an opinion is supposed to be the our, our own expression. Um, but it's basically that uh, we are produced by, um, by opinions. So what we are we are produced um, um, as uh, the expression of some kinds of of opinions, and this is no the soft dictatorship or the soft power. And so the, the important thing is also that 
um, there is no more difference between facts and their interpretation. Uh, and this difference must be uh, annulled or, or concealed. Um, and I think this is really, really important and also really, really pertinent for, for today. Um, so um, what we are provided are not explicit opinions, but they are supposed to be facts. And in fact, um, we are not, not wondering about the interpretation of the information that we receive, but we are just concerned about the veracity of the information. So we, we, we are all saying, okay, is this a, a real news or a fake news? Uh, is, is this a fact or it's not a fact? But we, we are not concerned with the interpretation. Uh, no, because the interpretation is already in the fact. So the fact uh, is just uh, entailing uh, feelings, behaviors, opinions, what we, and decisions. Uh, so the idea is, is this a real fact? We, we take this as an information and we react accordingly um, without interpreting this. So we, we are there is already an interpretation we goes with, but if it's not a fact, so if it's a fake news, for example, um, we shouldn't no, uh, react, we shouldn't think that the world is um, such as it's represented by this supposed fact, no? So we are not um, we, we are not uh, concerned with interpretations, but with facts. Um, and, and facts contain uh, or entail their own interpretation. So we are just wondering about the veracity of facts, but not about the interpretation. So interpretations are never presented as interpretations, never as point of view, but always as facts. Uh, so the problem is that we don't know if facts are true or not. Um, but we are not producing our own interpretations of facts. We are just accepting facts. So we are just looking for criteria for accepting or non accepting facts. So for accepting or non accepting to be molded um, as sets of opinions. So interpretation even exists at all. So this neutralization of the difference between facts and interpretation uh, is of decisive importance for it uh, reveals the totalitarian nature of this mechanism. It is totalitarian because when decision or events called facts are furnished in advance with a particular slant, uh, the same interpretation is assured, uh, assured of being disseminated everywhere. Uh, for in this way, no one could even entertain the idea that we was a mere interpretation of that there might be other interpretation, or even better, that interpretation even exists at all. So there are just facts, true facts or fake. And so this idea that we are provided with facts and not with interpretation, let um, us think that we, we are free, no? Uh, because because there is no one an ideology, no, which which is imposed. Uh, so just just facts. Um, but the problem is that is that facts as information already entails. Uh, decisions, feelings, behaviors, and desires. The idea is to supply uh, consumers with a pre-interpreted word and ensuring that this word should be interpreted uh, as the word. That is a fact. 
Okay, so just to go quickly to the end, uh, to leave some time, some space for other things for a discussion, etc. Uh, the other things which is important, I think here then you can you can read novel reading by yourself. Um, okay, this this is important um, about the goal. So we said okay, this kind of soft power no is let is less um, violent than. Uh, classic uh, totalitarianism you know, or this kind of strong power of authoritarian power no um so we think is is bloodless the problem is that it's, it's not bloodless it's bloody um it is not it's not bloodly because it's kind of um um imposing uh, behaviors and imposing uh, beliefs in an aggressive way uh, but it's badly because of the consequences because of the risks uh, so the idea is that um, we behave as our decisions are meant to uh, to satisfy our own desires uh, so we don't feel constrained in, in some way but the problem is, is that and we think that um, we are just following our goals. Uh, the problem is that the effect of everybody following his own desires, as his own goals, and just behaving ethically by consuming, uh, bring about uh, threats uh, which are really risky. So we are really uh, developing the, the, the means to destroy ourselves. So it's the consequences no, of, this, of this process, which are really violent, which are really bloodly. Uh, and, and we cannot see them, basically. Um, so uh, we, 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 we express our conformity by becoming murderers. Um, without knowing it, uh, no, without having the possibility of, of grasping it or, or realizing it. Um, so the methods of seduction will be, or oh, the more bloodless and humane, the more bloodly and horrible are the goals and the risk that we assimilate. So basically uh, today, uh, what, what we, what we, do uh, the kind of world we are bringing about is 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 a world uh, where we have the power of destroying you no know, um ourselves and, and we are all collaborating um to this and the means that compel us to collaborate are just soft you no know, are gentle uh, as they as um we are just doing what we desire but basically the risk which is implied is uh, is uh, tremendous. And the other important things, thing before um, concluding is that um, uh, technology is um, the subject of history. So he says, okay, um, Okay, technology is the subject of history. So the idea is that um, basically what is producing our future, what, what is producing our um, our future world is technology itself. So our future is the development of technology, what will be bring about by the development of technology, which is a kind of necessary uh, kind of evolution. Uh, which which we are we are following. We we cannot even imagine what 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 it will be with this this kind of future. Um, but we we are not we are not able no to to to, to determine to, uh, to 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 orient to imagine with, with this kind of future because we are not the subject of history. Uh, but the subject of history is technology, is technology itself. 
So we have uh, renounced considering ourselves as the subjects of history and we have abdicated um, uh, and we have replaced ourselves with other subjects of history or more accurately uh, with a single subject uh, technology whose history is not like that of art or music, just one among other histories, but the history, or at least it has become the history over the course of recent history, uh, which has been confirmed in the most terrible way uh, by the fact that the existence or non-existence of humanity uh, inks on its development and use. Uh, so the, the fact is that the development of technology is, is what uh, will determine the future uh, of, of our, our world. And basically the existence or non-existence of humanity is less important than the development of, of this process. I know, and, and probably this process will continue with, without humanity or humanity will continue as an appendix of, of technology, no? So we will be uh, uploaded, no, in the big computer. Um, so he says we, we are in, in the same, so because at the beginning of his, of his paragraph, he was, he was saying, okay, uh, proletarians do not have history, you know, proletarians do, are not the subjects of history. Um, because masters no, are the subjects of history. They are making history uh, because the history is written by winners. No, um, uh, So we, we have a difference in classes. So dominant classes were the subjects of history uh, and dominated classes were just a co-historical. Uh, not following the determination of dominant uh, classes were kind of um, constructing you know, the world, the future, etc. Uh, today, there is no more a difference between classes, but it's just that everybody are just co-historical with respect to the subject, the real subject of history, uh, which, is, uh, which is technology. And so we, we are going back now to, to the problem we discussed at the beginning, which is this really human freedom of determining uh, the, 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 the future, not determining what kind of world we want to create, what kind of world we want to contribute to bring about. Um, to do this, we have to assume uh, that we are the subjects of, of history, you know? Um, if technology is the subject of our history, so, so we, rather than bringing about a world as a finality of our collective effort, uh, our collective effort is to be the servant of technology, which is the subject of history and it's determining the kind of world uh, we are um, collaborating to, to, to bring about. So um, he says no that um, we you know, we have to follow with these changes which are bring about uh, by um, by technology. Uh, and in uh, the Heideggerian manner, if there is any, um, any subject of history that who is not us, but precisely technology. So we are the, the shepherds, no, uh, I think also, also said that we uh, humans are the shepherds of uh, being. And for Gunther Anders, we are no more the shepherds of beings, but we are the shepherds of, of technology. So it's technology which brings about with unconcealed uh, things um, or raw materials. Uh, and we are just the shepherds now of, of technology, which is the real subject of, um, of history. Okay, so I think I, I stop here and um, okay, just to hear your comments, questions, um, 
just to open the open the discussion um and uh, and then we will leave last uh, 10 minutes to uh, to introduce yourself and to and i will give you some information about um the presentations and the and the finalists Okay, so we have a question from Ankur. Hello, Anna. Thank you. Hi. So, <laughs> wonderful presentation. And uh, my question, uh, it's quite a uh, statement uh, in regards to technology because the idea like technology, good, bad, but the who is running it, what individual is controlling that technology and collective or what group of people are running that technology. Even the desires, no, with what individual and group is making a desire for us. Because desires, we, we even don't know what we desire or what we need. We are always in finding or the technology, if given to us, we always in the process of finding and making multiple uh, ways of imagining and using it. That's the best uh, possible way with the technology. But the problem is when a group or an individual decides about uh, the technology. You know? So yeah, this is sure. what, what uh, go was going in my head. And with that, like this also text, whole text is quite close to... Uh, and I rent uh, uh, philosophy when she was mentioning about uh, uh, the person who signed the gas chamber or ghost, uh, they, they are not the problem because uh, they were also the people who need promotion. When they, the person came to a courtroom, he seems to be very innocent and just like a normal per person, but also the Holocaust was caused by also the capitalism but not those individuals to be blamed after that, no? So, yeah, this is what I've been thinking about. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, um, basically, I, I think that for, for responsibility, uh, of course, there is, there is a responsibility um, in, in, the, in the elite of the developers, of the technocrats, um of a politician but but i think that for for gunther anders uh, the problem is that we cannot we can no more no longer identify them so there is no uh, no just one person or just one group deciding what our desires are but there is a sort of global competition for imposing desires, depending on the kind of technology that we develop. So we, we also have alternative, but anytime there is just one winner, uh, no? Um, so the idea is that um, there is no there is no plan. Uh, there is no an end which is decided by somebody and that everybody has just following, no? There is no one who has a master plan in his mind for what will future will be. There are just enterprises competing to develop tools, no? Um, and to impose these kind of tools, to impose the needs which are uh, conform to the use of these tools. Um, so there is a kind of appearance of democracy in some way, no, of, of a market competition. So it's the consumer who decides, um, and in some way it is, so it's the market which, which decides. But the, this is why um, for, for Anders, the real subject is not somebody or a group, uh, but it's technology itself, because in any case, technology is a winner. Um, if it is a, a kind of technology or another one or a mean or another one or an enterprise or another enterprise, in any case, what wins is the uh, is technology itself because it it will develop in this way. So you have new products, new needs, etc. So in any case, uh, the winner uh, is technological development. 
and also the developers or the elites or the technocrats, they are shepherds of technology. Uh, they are no more subjects, uh, even though, of course, they have more power than other people, no? <laughs> um, but just because uh, they are more efficient tools. So from the perspective of technology, they are more useful than other people because they have more skills. So they are able, you no, know, uh, we have, are more useful to develop technology. Uh, so they have, they have more power because they have more value. Uh, but as shepherd of technology, as servants of technology, uh, not our, as masters of technology. Um, and also for, for Anders, politicians are in the same kind of, of situation, no? Uh, so politicians are, um, are not afraid of the consequences of their policies, but they are more afraid about being um, um, in um, not, not uh, advanced enough. So their idea is okay. We, uh, our, our nation, our our state, we 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 have to improve technology. If not, we are left behind. Uh, we are undeveloped, no. So so also, also for for politician, the idea is not uh, a plan for um, improving society or for solving social problems. They just say, oh, okay, there are social problems. So we develop technology and we will see what we will do. So even though there will be problems with the technology that we develop, so consequences like deadly consequences or very bad consequences for people, it's not a problem because we develop further technology. So we solve the problem which are produced by technology. So for, for politicians also, the problem is not... Uh, the consequences or the actions, so what kind of world they plan to bring about. The problem is not that the, the nation is 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 advanced, is to improve the, the technological the progress of the nation, the competitivity of the nation itself. So they are also in the condition of being shepherds of technology rather than being masters no, of the plans. Uh, and then, of course, very very uh, Anders and Arendt are, are are really are really close also about these these reflections on on responsibility. So we have another question from Antonio Frederico. Uh, yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the lecture. It was really interesting, uh, especially the, the two concepts of homo creator and homo materia, and. Perhaps it's a naive question, but I'm not familiar familiar to Anders' uh, text. Uh, does does he have a propositive part at some point uh, in face of this diagn diagnosis that he does? Like, what is the he he just offers the the panorama, or does he also presents uh, some kind of solution or path? Um, so I think his life was a kind of trying to be a solution so no not a solution um but so so for, for for him the problem is that we are collaborating without um without realizing it so without grasping you no know, uh, the end of what we are doing without without grasping the the, the risk uh to which we are exposing you know, ourselves which is which is a risk of, of mass destruction of annihilation of, of humanity uh, so um, I, I think that for him the, the idea is to uh, is to be violent enough to bring about this kind of consciousness. So his writings, are, as as you saw, are really explicit, really aggressive, really violent, and sometimes exaggerated. No, uh, so so his writings. So that's why he thinks I'm not a philosopher. I'm not a philosopher because what what I'm doing is trying. Uh, is trying to um, I, I'm I'm trying to wake up people to say okay uh, you have to react there is a contradiction you are not free uh, there is a moral contradiction in what you are doing so you you cannot keep on going like, like this no uh, so for him it's not really a solution but the reason why he was an activist and the reason why he was doing philosophy in 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 this in this kind of aggressive way you know um is 
um, is, is because he thinks that the, the, the role of intellectual, but also the role of the artist, because, because there is uh, a lot of writings about, about the arts in, uh, in Gunther Anders is this idea of showing this disagreement uh, between um, what we are what we are doing and uh, the, the, the the moral feeling uh, and the necessity of freedom, no, and the basic freedom of the human being. So the, the idea is to show this this contradiction, um, this non agreement between the world we are bringing about and the world we are supposed to bring about, uh, no. Um, as human beings, uh, not as human beings with a nature, but to express the nature of human beings as not having a nature of being able to change, to to, to have a history, you know, to transform, you know, uh, societies and and um, and, of, and organization because we are constructing a society um, which is um, which is ending. So it's not a solution, but it's the idea of, okay, we, we try, since the problem is that we don't, uh, our capacity for feeling things is not developed enough. I try to develop it, you know, I try to make you feel, to make you see what you cannot feel, what you cannot see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In, in Heideggerian terms to unveil the, the problem and show it. Mm. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Try to force people, no? mm -hmm. uh, to force to feel, to force to see, and it's really close to also to to Deleuze, is ecstatics, no. So our, our idea is to, to 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 force to feel what we cannot feel, force to see what we cannot see. So other question is Sorus. I don't know if I pronounce correctly. Uh, hi. Yes, of course. It's Sorush. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope I, I have a bit of a problem with my internet connection. I'm sorry if you cannot hear me well. But uh, uh, I wanted to ask you. Um, so uh, this all of this reminds me of uh, mostly of Heidegger and his concept of uh, Gestell. And also the Zeins Geschichte, like like the history of being. So, um, the, if there we can um, uh, say that there is kind of a um, a horizon for Heideggerian thought, or or for any thought about technology or or capital, uh, maybe it's that where does it come from? Where is it being? Uh, where is it? What what is what is the agent? Like maybe quote unquote, that is that is um, imposing uh, this situation um, on 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 the world or on on humanity. So, uh, like for example, in uh, Heidegger, there, I guess there is no answer other than being itself. Huh? It's kind of a tautology. Like why does being present itself or everything else as um, uh, as sources of energy? Like the answer is because it does so that we don't know, huh? Because uh, this is what I get from Heidegger. This is the era in the history of being where everything is presented as as bestand, huh? as 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 a source of energy. Um, like Zeins Geschichte is 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 what what is playing us all from behind the scenes, so to speak. Um, but it, it, if you look at it from a Marxist point of view, like it's it's capital itself that is pushing us towards this to 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 towards being and and acting like this or freudian from from freudian point of view it's a death drive maybe huh i'm just i'm just speculating but I'm, I'm not sure uh, you but but is there an ontological answer is there a horizon where we can search for an answer to this question why we are being pushed to do this because if you if you say like it's it's technology itself huh Maybe, maybe it's the answer, but is there is is it where philosophical inquiry stops, or can we go further? I don't know. Um, I don't know if if I could uh, elaborate the question. Yeah, no, sure. So it's a it's a, it's a good question. Thank you. Um, so basically, Anders is is a student, you no, know, of Heidegger. So he studied with Heidegger. Then he thinks that um, Heidegger didn't go far enough. 
uh, yes. with his reflection. So he says, okay, um, also, also because for, um, because for, for Anders, um, the, the, the starting point uh, is this uh, philosophical anthropology. So the, the idea for, for Anders is that uh, humans are not natural beings. Uh, so um, humans really um, are free because they construct the world, no? Um, and, and this is really similar no, to, 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 to Heidegger, no, in some ways. So, so we, 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 we organize uh, no uh, beings uh, in some way, the world in in some in some way, and technology is a mean to do that. Um, the problem for um, for Anders is that um, we put we, we construct this technology uh, which substituted being in some way. So our being is technology. Uh, it's not a, a being which is organized by technology. So there is no uh, a, a previous being which is technologically organized in a process, but we managed to substitute uh, being with technology. So we, uh, what determines of a matrix, what you call the matrix is technology itself. So we manage to put uh, technology at the place of being. That's why it's the subject of history, you know, uh, because everything is produced by technology. Uh, so it's not just that we, uh, as as human beings, we decide to organize the world in some way and technology is a consequence of the world we are constructing, uh, but we manage to construct technology in some way to be the, pro the producer. Uh, once we do this, we, we are stuck. Uh, no, we, 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 are, we, we are stuck because um, um, humans are no more uh, the, the being which, is, which has the duty of unconcealing being, uh, no, uh, but it's technology. So technology is no more a means for revealing being as in Heidegger, um, but uh, technology um, is the author, is it's at the place of the human in this way. So humans are revealed as raw materials by technology. I and, see. And you have this kind of thing really at the really, really end of the, um, um, problem about technology in, in Heidegger is was wondering maybe human beings will be raw material someday or whatever. Uh, now it, it happened, uh, no, yes. it happened. Um, so we, we are dispossessed of this kind of freedom of revealing through technology uh, because we are revealed by technology, you no? Know? So we put technology at the place of a subject, at the place of being, and we are produced by technology. So we we are no more producers of technology. So we produce that technology, which produce ourselves technologically in, in return. Yeah, that's why maybe Heidegger uses a term like um, um, like it, um, it's some kind of a trick technology uh, plays on us. He uses the exact word. I don't remember the word. It's like um, I guess. Machenschaft. So Machenschaft, as in English, machination. It's a kind of a plot that technology plays on us. We don't know that we are serving its purpose. We think we are doing uh, something for ourselves, but at the same time, exactly, we are we are doing its its command. How huh? we are reacting to its command. So uh, it, there, there, there comes again this notion of concealment. It conceals itself all the time. Yeah. that's why we are we are it can it can play us oh that's why that, that that's what i get from heidegger and it, they're really close i guess it's it's very wonderful to read them together maybe yeah and also i know i think that, uh, that you you can you can use anders to to make this kind of bridge uh between for example heidegger and leotard great yeah, exactly an economy, about... no? 
it's a missing good, gap, I think. And good we are, maybe. Anyway, because it's really close also of, to our desiring uh, conception of capitalism, no, where we're desired, no, our produce needs are produced by this kind of machine, etc. No, so I think it's it's kind of bridge between between Heidegger and uh, and Lyotard or Deleuze. Uh, uh, also, even maybe Bataille, because the, the question is what to do with the excess. Uh, I guess there is this question looming at the background all the time. What should we do with this excess? There, it, there was in, in one of the, the texts that I was reading that you sent by, by Andres. We, we do not, we, we produce too much and we do not do what to do with it. So yeah, uh, no, we have to destroy it. No, we have to destroy it by yeah, means of war. So war is a way of producing because it's a way of destroying, yeah. you know? Uh, and we see this today really clearly, no? So, so we have too much. Of course. So we, we, we are going Even to war. So we are of, developing the, technology as a means to go to war. <laughs> so yes, it's, yes. It's, 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 concept, uh, different concepts of surplus, like surplus enjoyment in Zizek. Like there, there is this surplus enjoyment that is that is we do not do we do not know what to do with it. It shows itself in the in the in the like in the form of like racism or something like that. We do not do what to do with we do not know what to do with it. That the, the surplus of our enjoyment, so we produce some people in order to like manipulate them and and things like that. So it's a, it's a very interesting concept, and and thank you for uh, like uh, introducing me to this thinker. He's great. Important thinker, that's the reason that it's unknown, but I think it should yeah, be I known. Didn't even, so, I, 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 I didn't even know. Why. Yeah, heard of it. It's great. Okay, so Freya. Uh, hi, Anna. Can you hear me? All right. Yes. My internet connection is a bit spot. I think I'll leave my camera off. Um, so uh, thank you for this introduction to Günther Anders. I'm actually German, but I never had a chance to read his work. Um, I wanted to ask a question about um, automation, but um, maybe. What maybe more your personal take on automation than uh, that of Günther Anders, because I'm coming from a more Simondonian perspective. And of course, Simondor writes that um, the the um, the most ideal or the most perfect machine is not the automaton, right? But that which has, harnesses a certain kind of um, margin of indeterminacy. And I was thinking when you said that um, technology will definitely benefit um, in the end, I was just wondering in this current um, tendency towards automation, um, if this is actually something um, that will that will actually be good for technology in the end, because uh, I was wondering, I was thinking, for example, about uh, this, um, this uh, aspect of synthetic data. Uh, in which uh, algorithms themselves create information, right? And and some people say that this is sort of a degeneration of of data in itself uh, in the process of automation. So yeah, I was basically wondering um, uh, what your what your take would be on on automation in the context of this um, hegemony of of technology. Yeah, no. So um, I, I think that uh, as Simondo as Simondo uh, says. Uh, there should be an indeterminacy, you know, in, in technology, M meaning meaning that if um, uh, if it's used according to freedom, or if it's used according to 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 to, to produce you no know, uh, word to 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 allow for uh, diversification, to allow for history, uh, no technology should be transformed, you no, know, uh, but transform according to um human uh idea of a finality you know uh um i i think that the problem today is that um we we are in, in a system where uh what we are producing so we we, we con good of consumption we are producing is information um so i think that automation today is a way of automatically producing information, which is which is a good, and uh, ontologically everything exists is information. Um, so raw material for producing information. So humans are information, and also 
raw materials to produce new information and anything has a value. Uh, no, is uh, is information and information is a mean for producing further information. Uh, so whatever we do, uh, no, for example, um, is a is is a, a production of information. Um, but what we do is consuming information. So basically, we have to consume information. Um, we have to consume information um, because otherwise we cannot survive. So uh, we, we, we need to, to consume information in order to survive because we are in a society where decisions depends on the information that we have. Uh, so it depends on our capacity of treating information. Uh, given the fact that there is too much information, we need technology in order to treat the information. So we have to use technology in order to treat the information. Uh, treat the information means that we can take uh, good decisions, basically, in our interest. Uh, but by taking information, by taking decision, using information, consuming information, we also produce information. The information that we produce is used in order to produce new information. New information meaning um, not only data, but also new technologies, no? So to develop technologies further. Um, so so this, this is the cycle, the, the economic cycle, which, which is based on, which is based on, uh, on information. Uh, so the fact is that it's not a contribution to knowledge in some way, um, but since information is a consumption product, it has value only when it can be sold. Then, so when it's new. Uh, so yesterday information has no, no value. We need to produce new information to destroy information, to reproduce new information. Uh, but it's not a value of knowledge, which is something um, what we can, um, think of, of as a capital or as an heritage uh, to live to future generation, for example, because there will be no future generation, maybe. So the information that we produce is not information uh, to create a world and to, you know, um, to, to provide something for a future, but it's just a mere consumption. No, it's just a mean to produce other means and to produce other means without any, any kind of finality. So that's my problem with the automation, automatic uh, production of knowledge or the automation of um, production of information. So I think it's a sort of degeneration of the use of technology. So um, it's it's not in serving at the service of creating a, a collective world. So we, we have idea, but we are communicating a lot. We are really sharing. And but the fact is that uh, we we are just uh, compelled to produce information as a consumption good good and ourselves, we conceive ourselves as information and our value is the value of information. So in social media, this is really evident, no? So, so it depends on our popularity. Uh, it's the value of the information pattern that we, we are. So influencers, for example, are considered really desirable patterns of information, which are really useful to produce new information. Other people are information which nobody wants, no? So it's less valuable. Um, and there is a competition to be good producers of information, which means a competition to produce ourselves as a consumable uh, information, um, but there is no other end. So it's not really producing a collective world. It's just to be to be consumed uh, immediately. Um, I, I mean, then it's longer. It's 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 a more complex problem. But basically, this is this is my. My personal opinion on, on the thing, and and I think that Gunter Anders is useful to to think about all all this problem in some way. Uh, so I well, think let I me just say that uh, we've already reached the time, but I think we could go to Nick's question. Yes, Nick. Um, 
information. And then, of yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Anna, for the really, really good uh, introduction. Um, yeah, I was just wondering because, like, I've started reading Stiegler recently, and kind of, I guess, there's a lot of parallels. And you know, like with Stiegler, this kind of, um, you know, this like conception of the human is kind of lacking, and like, kind of, the human and techniques can't really be separated. So, like, as such, I guess you kind of, you know, you never really have like a fully human subject and object, but something kind of in between. And like, I'm wondering how like that would relate to like does Anders take a similar position with this like essence is no essence or because maybe like the way you narrativized it, it sounded like it could be like you know at one point in history we had kind of human subjects that made history and analysis technology or is there something like you know this like who and the what kind of thing it's just because I've been reading it a bit of Stigler today like they kind of are not discernible in Stigler like for Anders do those kind of like ontological questions come up and then yeah, I guess, how does that affect the kind of politics? Thanks. Yeah, no, I think that there is something something similar because for for um, uh, for, for Stigler, of course, technology is, is is the way in which humans transform themselves, no? Um, so the, the, the essence of, of human beings is to, to transform itself through technology. So it's, you know, it enables new capacities no new behaviors no new prophecies no um and uh, and and for anders it's kind kind of the same so a human being transform itself for through technology uh in some way and it's not negative in itself um as for stigler no for stigler is not something which is negative in itself it's the way in which we are so we express our freedom in, in this way by transforming ourselves through uh, technology and by transforming our world now our society is who we are um you know uh, artificially uh through, through through technology um then the problem i think it's a kind of common problem um, meaning that we arrive at a paradoxical situation where we are no more transforming ourselves by using technology, uh, but technology is transforming itself using humans. Um, so that's why we 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 uh, we are no more subjects. No, even though we we are subjects. We, transform ourselves through technology. We, we are no more um, responsible uh, directly or we are, we are not assuming the responsibility, you know, because we delegated the transformations to technology rather than assuming uh, assuming them. So there is a, in, in Stigler, then we, we have this problem of control, you no, know, of, um, of this technocratic uh, uh, control um on on our lives um then yeah uh i think where there are there are similarities then i don't i don't think that um the problem is really control uh in some way uh, meaning that there is no plan uh, no goal. I, I think that what Anders uh, stress and for me is, is important is that there is no, what we are missing is not a control um, with an end, with a finality, which is decided, planned by somebody or something or whatever, but there is no, the problem for Anders is that there is no finality and that uh, um what we are missing is is really the, the end you no know, the possibility of planning uh the possibility of controlling what we are doing uh rather for for stigler maybe it's more a problem of control uh than of absence of finality but i think that they share a lot also because there is a lot of heidegger no in, uh, in stigler Okay, so I think we can stop here. So I think we will make the introduction next time. <laughs> so in in two weeks, I'm, I'm sorry, but it, I think it's kind of late. So I just tell you something about the, uh, the presentations and the, the final essay. So I was thinking of having all the presentations in the last uh, week. 
as I think it's March, no, April 21st, no? Um, so what uh, I, I would like for, for the presentation uh, is to uh, to choose one of the reading or just one of the problem in one of the reading uh, readings uh, and, and try to, to see how it's pertinent for today and how you can use it to, to think about the present and the challenges of the present according to your own interest, your um, own researches, your own field. Um, and uh, and uh, the, this presentation uh, could be a kind of sketch of a final essay uh, that you will write. Uh, I think you will have to submit this two or three weeks now after the end of the um, of a seminar. I will tell you now, three weeks maybe. Uh, I will give you a deadline anyway. Uh, so that's it. Uh, since you are many, uh, maybe there will be no time for everybody. So um, I think that we can have a list in the share folder with the names and you can you can put your name if you want to present in the last week directly, so we can also discuss about your presentation and the project of your final essay uh, with a subject more or less of your of your presentation, and um, and we can also allow, for example, for some recorded presentation if you prefer, or for example, if you are not available that day or whatever. Uh, so we can we can have both the options. Uh, either you, you present on the last uh, day, uh, so we can discuss your project, etc. cetera, uh, or you can uh, send me uh, the same day or the day later uh, a, recorded, uh, a recorded presentation. Uh, so we just made a list. You will put your names and uh, we can proceed like that. Is that okay for you? Okay. Cool. So thank you very much for being here, for listening to this, for your for your questions. Uh, looking forward to hear something from you. <laughs> uh, to to know you a little bit better. Sorry for we we don't didn't have enough enough time. Um, and so see you in two in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.